Right, so hello and welcome for another episode of the Bitstocks podcast. So today we have none other than Josh Petty. People know him from the Twitch app, uh, but you've been involved in quite a few different things, uh, haven't you, Josh? So just so people get a much better understanding as to who you are and what it is that you do, please, Josh, Mike, over to you, my brother. Uh, who are you? What is it that you're working on? And yeah, introduce yourself. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. I'm Josh Petty, uh, CEO and co-founder of Twitch, uh, also known as Elon Moist on Twitter. Um, I've got a background in building software as an entrepreneur and um, been interested in Bitcoin for some time. And I'm trying to build the future of the internet on Bitcoin, uh, which is Bitcoin SV, of course. So I'm having a lot of fun doing that. Nice, nice. So when did you first get introduced to the world of Bitcoin? I well, and so in university, I I started already gotten into the software uh, web, started out building websites in the early days, um, and uh, kind of randomly encountered it at a party. Um, funny enough, <laughs> and uh, a friend of mine's brother had um, mentioned Bitcoin, and uh, I, I I didn't really uh, think too much of it, but I made note of it and I had a look at the wiki and um, basically understood that it was PayPal with computers. <laughs> and uh, it took about, I don't know, 48 hours for me to basically never forget that Bitcoin, that word Bitcoin. And, and I really dove in. And uh, so how long ago was this? The next year. Uh, 2000. This is about 2012, 2013. Wow. Uh, so you've been early. I was I was pretty early. I um, uh, unfortunately, I was a pretty broke college student at the <laughs> time, uh, but I definitely uh, jumped right in and got involved. Um, Mm. And, uh, you know, even had the chance to experience a pre Coinbase Bitcoin world yeah. in the U.S. It, you know, that was really the way to do it. So just sort of um, uh, been a I was able to just understand uh, the abstract of Bitcoin was that it was going to automate a lot of things that people mm. did, like PayPal, um, banks and things like that. And it really interested me. Nice. And how have you seen, I guess, the space evolve over those years that's then now motivated you to do a project like Twitch. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> it, it's it evolved is a funny word. Uh, I think in a lot of ways people got really dumb about Bitcoin because <laughs> they were it's sort of exhausting to try to uh, there's a lot of possibilities on Bitcoin mm. and um, it, it, it sort of dumbed it down over the years. But I think with Bitcoin, SV, we're really bringing back all this possibility, um, really thinking about it as an infrastructure mm. for the Internet. And um, I just I think that uh, that's really the the key piece to that is that I guess it doesn't matter so much that what happened before. But I certainly had fun learning about things like Ethereum and other types of cryptocurrency mm. projects because um, at the time I didn't really I sort of trusted the smart guys, the leaders in the space that they're maybe smarter than me. Mm. I was a little bit naive and uh, was really looking into applications being built on the blockchain. Um, and with other cryptocurrencies uh, along the way. So I, I kind of ca came back to the root of everything um, in the last two years or so, uh, back to Bitcoin, thinking about building on Bitcoin, and really now understanding why it has advantages and over other cryptocurrencies and ultimately will be the, the sort of one world blockchain. One world blockchain, we're definitely gonna come back to that. Um, but okay, so what's important uh, from your standpoint about the model that underpins Twitch. Why is this, in your opinion, the next stage as to how we need to be addressing the subject of social media? Yeah, uh, well, Twitch, you know, started out sort of this idea of let's build interfaces to Bitcoin because we think it has advantages for the users to own their data. Mm. So uh, Twitch feels a lot like Twitter um, and it's like a social network interface. Uh, but the really the concept there is that there's a big problem with how social networks work. Um, it's really the central authority when a user uh, posts on there, they don't have a lot of rights. Uh, it's hard to monetize. Uh, they can't take their data with them. It's, it's mm. basically not archived mm. somewhere outside of that company's server. Um, I, I just think that's a really, really big use case and a big value add. Um, I think the futures, people are becoming really aware of their data now mm. and we're seeing these really big companies and these really, really big entrepreneurs, really wealthy, successful guys, maybe didn't start out being so bad, 
had a really big vision for the future, but they didn't understand the funder, like the fundamental uh, of the internet was broken. Yeah. Uh, and Bitcoin just just kind of bridges that gap. Uh, it puts power back in the user's hand. Uh, businesses can still exist and do really cool things, but uh, the users can now have control over their information and actually trade that information. So I'm really interested in those topics, uh, data ownership, uh, sort of uh, information markets. That's all associated with how Twitch works. And of course, the underlying uh, technology is Bitcoin. So when you say trade their data and trade their information, uh, just give me some examples of a use case. So in a, with Twitch and where you're going, I don't know if you've got that implemented right now, um, that just some use cases of how a user would want to trade their data and their information. Yeah, uh, Twitch is a really simple use case. Uh, to just It's a really like primitive information mm. market, I guess you could call it. It's just really simple for the user to understand. It's like Twitter, but if you get a like, you reply, you yeah. share. There's money, there's sort of money being thrown around everywhere. And the person that creates that can profit from it. So mm. that's really important core piece to this. Uh, but I think even in the future, there's going to be these, th this, this aspect of like advertisement will change where the user is really going to pay for a value added yeah. Yeah. advertisement. Um, the user is going to be able to say, "Here's my access to this information," and in return, they get uh, they get some some money um, directly. Mm -hmm. Where right now, that's where all of these uh, social networks and big internet companies they really just they get all of the value, they make all the money, mm -hmm. um, and the user doesn't get any access to that. But they're actually the product; they're creating all this information. Yeah. The user's creating the value, so the incentives are really messed up, and um, it's messed up within the from the business perspective. It's messed up from the internet user, and I th I just think um, Twitch is just a really great example of how we can start to change that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. The incentives are completely misaligned, but one thing that's always fascinated me with social media um, and companies like Facebook, like Twitter, um, Instagram, etc., is that launching a competitor makes perfect sense. Like Twitch makes perfect sense as a competitor to Twitter. But then when you look at, okay, once you achieve the same degree of density as say these other platforms, like Twitter's got an insane amount of density. That's where the conversation is happening. So as much as we can say, both agree on the things that we all don't like about Twitter, right? That is where the body of people are. That's where the density of people are uh, right now. And from a business standpoint, I think social media is a very challenging one due to compliance and all the moderation and effectively mediation between discourse, right? That's a messy, 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 messy world. So how do you see the utilization of Bitcoin and building, say, a similar service to Twitter with the likes of Twitch on top of Bitcoin? How does that alleviate some or maybe a lot of the concerns around running a social media organization because you're getting a lot of now user input, right? And, and voting systems, et cetera. So you, there's, there's definitely a degree of cleansing coming from the users, right? But as an organization, what does that landscape look like once you start achieving some real density? Yeah, um, I, I, I actually will talk a lot about this at, at CoinGeek uh, mm -hmm. day two when I give the presentation. and. It, you know, when thinking about how Twitter started, they actually wanted to start out as a client. They wanted to mm -hmm. become sort of a, a protocol, if you will. Uh, people could build their own interfaces. Well, they actually, that was actually happening. And, and there's really, really popular Twitter clients. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that event, but the problem was advertisement. So they had to cut that out and say, no, you can't make your own Twitter interface. So what's going to happen now that Bitcoin's really being adopted the in its original way and, and understanding that it has data integrity and it can do all these really nice things. Uh, the companies like Twitch, uh, we actually can, we can actually like run a company and say, we don't collect any data, you know, mm. uh, we can do things like where uh, we offer a protocol or an SDK uh, or access uh, just basically bit tools for other developers to build uh, Twitch like interfaces. Um, so our business model is the whole aspect of it is to earn Bitcoin and uh, help Bitcoin network grow. Uh, that's that's sort of the foundational layer there, um, which helps us as a business to have a good incentive. So uh, we don't have to be these great overlords uh, mm. uh, of, of social media. Actually, what we're gonna do is just build tools for people to be able to enable themselves. Uh, Twitch just sort of is the 
hangout spot for people who think this way right now. Mm -hmm. And um, there can be other types of twitches. Uh, we're going to see twitches that localize twitch clients um, that localize in other countries, um, and they're going to be ran as separate entities. They, they'll all, they'll be obligated to local laws and, and moderation and things like that. Uh, so it really takes off the pressure uh, from us to have to solve those problems. Uh, that's sort of a, a user enabled. And even then, if you want to think uh, sort of like a digital franchise model where uh, we still have good incentives for mm -hmm. other people to run Twitch like clients. Um, so I'll, that's a little hint of where all of this is going. Um, mm. I, th I have some even further thoughts on that that I'll, I'll share another time. Yeah. Uh, but really, the, the aspect of social media is going to uh, decentralize. It's such a funny word, but mm. it will. It really will in a sense that the, the localized versions of these and not a single company has to be in charge of everything. Um, that It's actually just a way to sort of uh, allow other localizations and um, specific areas and specific groups of people to find their place. Mm -hmm. And we think that's going to be a really great uh, place to hang out. We think it's going to be a better internet overall, whether it's social network or or any type of uh, uh, of other internet company. Nice. And with uh, so you've got a few other ventures in the space, right? Uh, so I don't know if like these are still active, or maybe you could just talk me through like the thinking behind some of these. So there's uh, Honey Miner, uh, there's a concept called Unbanked uh, as well, and Area Twenty One. Yeah. So what's the thinking behind these these companies, these organizations? Uh, yeah, so um, Honey Miner is a company that got recently acquired. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a consumer mining software. So it was, the idea was sort of putting CPU, GPU, and ASICs to work in a really user-friendly mm -hmm. way. Um, the uh, that, that company was a really cool experience just because I was able to understand that there's a market for people who have compute and they want to uh, essentially trade that or yeah. use that yeah, 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 for yeah. things other than just sitting idle. Um, Unbank's a new, uh, cryptocurrency fintech newsletter. Uh, I think it has about 18,000 subscribers and okay. um, it's a, it's just really a good neutral uh, outlook on the market. It's not um, Bitcoin specific or anything. Uh, Area 21 is a uh, marketing and brand firm that, that um, I actually had started in the past with the co-founder of Twitch. Uh, Billy and um, we help all kinds of companies, both crypto and non-crypto, uh, launch their brands and get into the market and do things like that. And um, of course, there's Twitch, mm. and I've got a, a another new venture called Matterpool coming out uh, with some really interesting, really futuristic alien technology. <laughs> um, we're going to solve some pretty cool problems. And uh, so, what, what did you say? Sorry, what did you say? That, what did you say that was called? Uh, Matterpool. Yeah. Matterpool. Matterpool, yeah. Um, okay. You know, I won't talk too much about Matterpool today. Yeah. There's going to be some really cool stuff, but you, you can, Matterpool.io is the domain. Um, and what we're really trying to set out to solve are some pretty uh, big and crazy problems uh, like fake news. And, and we think we have some clever ways to do that okay. uh, with the power of Bitcoin and proof of work. So uh, you're going to see some really interesting stuff come from that. And um, yeah, I sort that of sounds, that sounds pretty interesting. Things I work on. That sounds pretty interesting. This is yeah. definitely clear to say you're pretty committed to the space and you've got a very quirky mind of, of, of looking at it uh, as well, which is, which is freaking awesome. Um, so how do you see it redeveloping then over the next five years? I mean, where, where does this really go for you? How would you let your imagination roam free? Like how, how do you see us as a global collective if we fulfill the Bitcoin vision? How do you see us interacting with one another in society because of say bitcoin and some of the work that you're doing on top of bitcoin and the work that you're aware of that's happening uh, on on top of bitcoin what, what does it look like how do we it's interact mm -hmm. it's so unlike our like silicon valley overlords or elon musk types that all it's like doom and gloom ai is going to take over the world mm -hmm. i personally think this is all bullshit it's we're about to enter this really like sort of golden era of like peace and prosperity mm -hmm. uh, thanks to Bitcoin and we're going to have we're going to I'm building tools and I'm committed to building tools I'm all in on this obviously um, we're going to make the internet and just generally the world a better place we're going to see people who can trade uh, across uh, anywhere on in the world mm -hmm. and they're going to be able to actually like develop good business and and foundations to their lives mm -hmm. uh, and I think that we're going to see this sort of new internet space where 
you know, I, trolling and all these bad things are still going to exist, yeah. but you're going to be held accountable. If you yeah. do something bad, you're going to be held accountable. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have, uh, you know, the all seeing eye watching you at all times. It just means that if you do something bad, the, that, you know, you, there's likelihood it's, there's more, uh, traceability. Yeah, and someone's going like to pull you up that. on your bullshit. Right. right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like on Twitch, for example, we always use it's if you if you want to troll somebody on Twitch, uh, you have to pay me. So you, you pay your <laughs> two cents to post your Twitch and you got to be committed. I, if I, I create something, they pay me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in that case, you love trolls, right? All the more the trolls better. Like pay me. <laughs> um, well, trolls are just trolls are just fans that are, um, you know, just they basically want to counter you instead of support you. But ultimately, yeah. they're fans, too. And you yeah. just in these systems, you can actually capitalize on their attention. Um, there's a cost to them doing things, and especially if it's really mm -hmm. bad. Um, at least there's some kind of increased difficulty wall for the people to be jerks online and, yeah. and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. the solution to all these problems is Bitcoin and sort of this this uh, whole like self sponsorship, put your money where your mouth is thing. That's what's going to help. Uh, help us have a better internet, a better world. Um, and again, I think we're going to see things where like prejudice is really going to be reduced uh, to not what you look like or, or what religion you are. It's going to be what, how, like how, how great is your work? What's your value? Yeah. Uh, what's yeah. your reputation? Uh, that's what, that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, and I'm, I'm actively building it. That's, that's brilliant. So Elon Moist, cause you, you mentioned Musk, dude, like where did, where they come from? I just got the that I remember now because I just got now the your image on Twitter playing in my mind right now. It's the frog, Kermit the Frog, right? Yeah. yeah. So right, yeah, right. the frog with frog with the mustache, basically. <laughs> so so Robbie, for why why Elon Moist? Uh, you, I know you just wrote for us Elon Musk, so I know there's definitely some some faults there that maybe we should talk on. Uh, what's what's the connection? Uh, yeah, well, I, it's, you know, it started out as sort of a joke, I guess, when I was a, a basic white guy in 2013 through 15, <laughs> talking on Twitter, nobody wanted to listen to me. Yeah, but yeah. when I showed up on the internet as uh, Kermit the Frog with the mustache, uh, people started listening. And I started <laughs> getting, getting a lot more attention for my ideas, because people weren't looking at me and essentially stereotyping me or, mm, or denouncing me mm, by the way I look. Mm, so it was mm. a really great uh, tool for creativity. Uh, and I, I really, um, in retrospect, uh, was really a, a great thing for me as a person too, and mm -hmm. and allowed me to connect with new people in new ways. Um, and the Elon Moist thing tor versus Elon Musk, I mean, it's just, I I, I guess, um, I just I'm really uh, disappointed in where the entrepreneurs and these really successful people in, in this previous era kind of ended up with their pessimistic views on the world. Um, they're sort of like entitlement to uh how they think humans can or can't progress and i think it's really Dude, disappointing i totally I'm not, agree I'm not with you into on this. it totally 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 agree with you on this so if we just dance on the subject of musk uh for a while right um because watching his you say progressive progressive thoughts on um the subject of ai right it has been like watching a chameleon change its spots and change its skin tone, right? He is, in my opinion, very handled, very, very, very handled. And I don't think the vast majority of his large claims and opinions are directly coming from him, right? Because I genuinely believe the guy's a genius. I think he is genuinely intelligent. So much so that he's very aware of the bullshit that he's spitting. Because he went from AI, 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 bad, 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 bad. And there's a lot of credence behind what he was saying around AI. That's where he actually had my attention because how he was speaking on it, there were certain things that he was saying. I was like, okay, yep, yep, yep. I, I see what it is that you're saying. I don't agree with it. 100% everything is that you're saying. Uh, but I, I, I can understand the rationale behind the thinking. Right? And then it's bait and switch. Um, I'm doing Neuralink. Right, I've got this AI lab uh, now. Um, I'm sending rockets to the moon, delivering payloads or whatever else not. I've actually slingshot around the dark side, uh, but I'm also now gonna say to you, there are, aliens don't exist. 
um, and a variety of other things. He's, he's very freaking handled. And what people don't realize with the subject of Musk, if you really look into the semantics of Tesla um, and the money Tesla received from Obama, right? And then just follow, yeah, follow, right. follow Musk's profile after that moment, right? And, and how he changed his, his patterns. Right. So he's a very, yeah, very, right. very interesting character. So on the subject of AI, it's so closely linked to obviously data um, and his direction. What's your thoughts? Uh, well, you know, first off, I think that um, Elon Musk, I, I don't want to I want to be clear that I think that he's a really successful entrepreneur and we don't shame that, you know, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. are sort of the scientists of the economy. So uh, in that respect, uh, I, I really uh, looked up to him at least mm. at, at some point in time, but I think I think his his brain sort of turned to mush, if you will, in sort of the aspect of even understanding how like uh, brain works and the fact that like humans are sort of the oracle of the computer and how we understand thought. Um, he seems to just like glance over that aspect when he uses these really. Well, he thinks he thinks topics. it's all a simulation, right? Yeah, um, you know, I, I just disagree. I'll just like mm. leave it at that without going too deep in the topic. Mm. But, you know, if we lived in a simulation, things would would sort of unravel um, in our reality. Right. So mm. it, it's real physics going on here. Um, and I think that it's it just like this. It all ties into the economics. I think that you hinted at where, you know, all of these big companies, uh, Tesla or whatever, it does not matter. You can mm. kind of cap them all up now. They've sort of reached their their peak. The whole point of this is, well, like, let's convince people that I know better. Let's yes. convince people that this is really scary and that I know how to handle and solve the problem. And so that way we get all these awesome tax dollars in our pocket to solve these. It's all, it's all, it's all fear porn. It's, it's, it's all fear porn. Absolute fear porn. And if people want to see just how like blatant it is, there was a recent interview, I think it was a few months back, um, of Elon Musk and Jack Ma uh, from Alibaba. And it was speaking on the subject of artificial intelligence josh i promise you my brother i was sitting i was like what the fuck like how are people listening to this these are two juggernaut billionaires and i kid you not my five-year-old will explain it better yeah right? and I well you know I, heard, heard, I, I saw that yeah i saw that i thought yeah i thought jack maul was uh, way more based about like mm -hmm. where he what he thought about this and how humans can have control over the computer and yeah, but he's also very just, reckless. He was very reckless. Though. He was like, oh, don't worry about it. Uh, it will also resolve itself. You don't need to be worried and just leave it down to us and yada, yada, yada. And then Musk is like, this isn't real. And he tried to take the opposite tack, but he couldn't even articulate his reasoning uh, either. There was no, in my opinion, tangible, intelligent discourse happening on that, on that conversation. I was, I was yeah. blown yeah. away. Yeah, it's just headline stuff. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I'm no uh, expert or, or artificial intelligence to me is almost just like a meme of like, well, how much funding can you get from like governments and, and venture capitalists? It's just like yeah. a yeah, topic yeah, 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 of yeah, yeah. like money funneling. And yeah. so not I, too far from blockchain, really, like blockchain and AI, <laughs> like similar, right? It's just buzzwords for the most part. I say 99% buzzwords. Yeah, well, you know, we are the AI. Yep. We we are the we are the intelligence, and things like Bitcoin are going to sort of absorb our information and uh, help us perform tasks and solve problems really much more efficiently. They don't just like learn on themselves or operate on themselves. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree, and I speak on that quite often um, about Bitcoin and how Bitcoin can provide a different solution to the subject of artificial intelligence and really in the sense of being one huge body of data in one place that is in my opinion where the real next potential the next level of bitcoin is going to be unlocked but there's no point say spending a vast amount of time energy and resources um, on on reading and curating and articulating that data set so much right now because we don't we haven't built up the density yet. Uh, this is why services such as uh, Twitch, which allow people to have discourse, because what people need to realize is, yeah, cool, people are having a conversation, but you are laying down intelligence on the system. 
right? You're laying down right. information on the system, okay? In a place okay. that can be pulled from effectively indefinitely. And when people understand at a more intimate level the process of knowledge, being the encapsulation of information with other human beings into one being, right? We're all doing it. Everything is a product of it. Every text you read is someone else's knowledge, right? Yep. And it's up to you whether you accept that into your own knowledge set or you reject it, right? But then yep. the question becomes is how much of that can I store and how much of it can I actually pull from an archive and make it useful, yep. right? And this is why... Hey, just, just the ability to see where you made mistakes in the past and yeah. like revise on that. And even if you would like other people to see that you had made a mistake and, and essentially improved, yeah. yes. you know, that's, that's just like a fundamental thing in life. And uh, the blockchain allows you to sort of do that in the digital space. And mm. you can say, well, I made this mistake. I, you know, I posted this information in the blockchain, this prediction, and it was wrong. Well, it's just, it's like accountability that you never had before. You could just, you know, delete that from Twitter or delete that from Facebook. And let's just pretend like that never <laughs> happened and keep buying my, my my T my my TA prediction last week or or, or yesterday. I'm like, oh shit, got it wrong. Delete and then here's my new TA prediction for today. Right? Is is people yeah, get the opportunity? Yeah, people get opportunity to rewrite them. So I'm basically bullshit. Uh, they way through, and the internet is such a good medium for bullshit because you never know really and truly who it is that that you're dealing with, and this is what I find so insanely exciting about the concept of Bitcoin when it starts hitting its potential. Because I'm an individual who takes great pride in the process of education, not through the traditional mainstream sense. In fact, I'm very outspoken against that, ironically. Uh, but let, letting passion be my compass, every single minute of every single day, I'm trying to further my understanding. Because what I understand myself is that no matter what my time horizon is, Whatever I know will always be finite. Even a million years from now, right? Whatever I know will be finite. But what I do not know will be infinite. Always, right? And there's a great humbling in that, in that acceptance. But what Bitcoin introduces is, as a global collective, mm -hmm. it's the same principle. But now you've got billions of people adding to that body of intelligence. So now it's as a human collective, what we know will always be finite and what we know will still be infinite, but what we know is so much denser now. And if I can take this body of data, this body of knowledge, this artificial intelligence, right, and I can make it an extension of my being, then I've rapidly accelerated. Now I am maybe a thousand years ahead in terms of intellectual understanding if I was just limited yeah. to myself, right? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. that is what I find so, so goddamn interesting. And, and people need to pay attention really uh, to services that are helping build that body uh, and that data set. And I could tell just by your responses and what you've been saying today, um, that you've got that thinking in mind and you're laying down the foundations um, and we need more projects like this. We need, that's, that's everything eventually is going to be on this system. Um, yeah. And going back to what you said very, very early on, it, 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 it really is a one, going to be a one blockchain world. Uh, I really do see this like the Highlander, um, depending on when you was born. I don't know if you would have watched uh, Highlander, um, but it was awesome. So it, it's, there can only be one. Uh, uh, and I, I very much see that same approach here with, with, with Bitcoin SV. But more importantly, it's the level of thinking of the entrepreneurs such as yourself within the space who are seeing it uh, that way. And we never really had this thinking um, a few years back when, when we're just limited to BTC and, and all the rest of it. It's just, it, it was too polluted with all the bollocks ideology of the ghost in their brains that they're fighting against, right? And not actually looking at the real world and thinking, oh man, we've got some incredible opportunities here to do some great stuff. Um, instead of bitching and moaning about, yeah, everything else. Yeah, well, I think, I think it reminds me of sort of, 
I think the vision of academic and like research is going to really explode to the point where, you know, you're just looking at Bitcoin as like the big institution where all of, everybody can have the collective ideas. This won't mean that like we won't have Marxism or capitalism or mm. different aspects of thought, like schools of thought. It just means they operate on sort of the same foundation and it lets us solve problems like because we can actually collectively work together yeah. and cooperate better now with this, this, this kind of structure. Yeah, and, and the problems get solved faster. Uh, bad ideas can die faster, which is a really big advantage. Um, we're going to see like really big problems like disease uh, being cured and, and how do we like actually save the climate? Should that be a thing? Like, sure, we have like, how do we understand how to just improve our environment around us, whether it's your office space or home mm. or uh, or the world? Right. So we're just going to be able to measure those things now at this really granular scale. And that allows us to actually improve and like set measurement pieces because you know, it's not about a dollar anymore. It's about like a Satoshi and mm. just like looking at the world as sort of uh, uh, one analogy is like the tree. You always see the tree above the ground, but actually most of the tree is beneath the ground. Above, and that's so just what Bitcoin below. gives us. Yeah, as above, so below. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. I couldn't agree more. Uh, people need to have a much more holistic approach, uh, a much more holistic understanding uh, as, as to what makes that tree stand uh right um dude man this is this has been great uh i know a bit limited on on time uh, but i'm really looking forward to meeting you in person you're, you said you're speaking on the 21st right yeah and i'll be there the 18th so um and like 19th we'll be hanging out in nice. the area if nice. i speak on the 21st at 11 30 um so come out and check it out and uh, i'll be talking about the future of social networks but it's really relevant to sort of how the internet works today and what we're going to kind of write the, allow everyone to be the hero of their own story. Well, dude, I'll be there. To have control. I'll be there. I'll be in the crowd, uh, sitting patiently excited, waiting uh, for you to take this stage because I can tell that you really want to delve in deeper, but you want to preserve your presentation. And that was me yesterday uh, when Shem was interviewing me on the Bitcoin SV channel. I was like, dude, man, I was like, you're, you're, on, my, you're on my presentation territory right now. Like, back off, back off. <laughs> so I, I, won't, I won't do the same to you, um, but I'm, I'm really looking to it, looking forward to it, brother. And thank you for coming yeah. on. Thank you for coming on today uh, and having a conversation. And yeah, we, you got us rooting behind you. You got us rooting behind you. So I'll see you at Thanks. CoinGeek. Uh, any last finishing thoughts before we wrap up? Uh, thank you for having me. I really love Bitstocks. I think you have wonderful taste and uh, I, I really love the aesthetic and the sort of topics that you cover. So I was really looking forward to this and I look forward to shaking hands in real life. And I, I think um, the future is bright for Bitcoin and, and the world and we can build it. Absolutely. Couldn't say it better, my bro. Uh, thank you so much for the comments as well. And yeah, guys, as always, um, if you like the episode, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And we we'll see you guys at CoinGeek. Make sure you check out Josh's talk. Peace, love and light, guys. All the best.